Hi. Now, before we start part C, just to recap, if you're watching the previous video, I showed you parts A and B. And we were given that x equals sex squared 3y for y between 0 and pi upon 6, and asked to find dx dy in terms of y. And then go on to show that dy by dx was this fraction here, 1 divided by 6x times x minus 1 to the power half. Now for part c, we've got to now go on to find an expression for d2y by dx squared in terms of x and give your answer in its simplest form for four marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this, just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, I'll take you through the work solution slowly or you might want to fast forward. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. So to get d2y by dx squared in terms of x, all I need to do is differentiate dy by dx with respect to x. And the easiest way of doing this, although it's not the only way we can do it, but the easiest way is to use the quotient rule. And that's the method I'm going to use here. So to get d2y then by dx squared, using the quotient rule, just as a reminder, it is the bottom of the fraction, okay, multiplied by the differential of the top, minus the top of the fraction, times the differential of the bottom. And it's all divided by the bottom of the fraction squared. So if we use that, okay, we'll just put equals, we've got the bottom of the fraction multiplied by the differential of the top. Well, the differential of the top is zero. And zero times anything is going to be zero. So I'm just going to write zero here just as a token then that I've actually done that part. Then it's minus and then it is the top which is one multiplied by the differential of the denominator here. And to do this we're going to need to use the chain rule. So I can see we're going to have a lot of brackets within brackets. So I'll put a square bracket there. So we're going to need to differentiate this by, I said the chain rule, but not only the chain rule. I can see we've got the product rule here as well, actually. And the product rule, remember, is when we have two parts being multiplied together. First part, say 6x, and the second part, x minus 1 to the half. We take one part, the first part, say, multiply it by the differential of the second part, and then plus the second part, multiply it by the differential of the first part. So that means then if we use the product rule here, we've got the first part, 6x, I'll put that in brackets, and now we multiply it by the differential of the second part. And this is where we're going to need to use the chain rule. You might know the answer straight off. It is quite easy, but I'm just going to write it down here. If we were to differentiate x minus 1, okay, all to the power half, I would say let the t, let t be x minus 1. So this is going to be equal to, or identical I should say, to t to the half, where t is equal to x minus 1. And that means that if I'm to differentiate with respect to x, x minus 1 to the power a half, what I do is say that this is exactly the same as differentiating t to the power a half, okay, with respect to t, and then multiplying this with dt by dx, the chain rule. It's as if these dt's cancel out, just leaving me with dt d half over dx. In other words, t to the half was x minus 1 to the half. Okay, so should work. So that's what I'm thinking about, okay, when I'm starting to differentiate this part down here. Okay, so we're starting to use the product rule. I know it's a, a, a lot here, but uh, we're using the product rule here. So we took the first part, 6x, 
Now we're going to do the differential of x minus 1 to the half, and we've got to use this bit here. So it's going to be a half of t to the power minus a half. t, though, was x minus 1, and that's going to be to the power minus a half. And then we need to multiply it by dt by dx. If I differentiate t with respect to x, I just get 1. We'll put the 1 in there, OK? So this is the first part of the product rule here. And then it's plus. And then we do this part, x minus 1 to the half, x minus 1 to the power half. And we multiply it by the differential of this part here, the 6x. Differential of 6x with respect to x is 6. So I'll close that bracket off. So let's just recap. First of all, we're doing the quotient rule here, OK, which was essentially the bottom of the fraction multiplied by the differential of the top. Differential of the top was 0, so we end up with 0. Then it's minus the top, the 1, times the differential of the denominator. And to differentiate this, we needed to use the product rule. And within this product rule, we had to use the chain rule here, OK? And when we do the quotient rule, this is now all divided by the denominator squared. So if we square this, we've got 6 squared is 36. The x here, when squared, is x squared. And x minus 1 to the half, when squared, is just going to be x minus 1. Now we need to tidy this up. So let's just come down here and we'll put our division line okay, through there like so. Underneath here we've got 36x squared times x minus 1. Now if I tidy this first term up here, okay, we've got minus 1 times 6 over 2. So in other words, minus 3. And then we've got this x here, so that's minus 3x. So we'll put minus 3x. And here we've got negative a negative power, x minus 1 to the minus a half, which we would write as 1 over x minus 1 to the half. So minus 3x times 1 over x minus 1 to the half is going to be minus 3x over x minus 1 to the half. OK, a bit of a squeeze there, but I hope you can see that. And then we've got minus 1 here times the 6. So that's going to be minus 6. And then we've just got x minus 1 to the power half. x minus 1 to the power half. So whenever you're doing this kind of work with the quotient rule, just tidy up your terms, OK, like I've done here. Now we've got to clean this up further. We've got this horrible fraction here. And the way we get rid of the x minus 1 to the half is to multiply top and bottom of our fraction. Let's just take this back a bit. Multiply top and bottom of the fraction by x minus 1 to the half. Remember, this is exactly the same as multiplying by 1. So it's not going to change the value of the fraction, just the appearance of it. So we'll come down here, OK? And we'll also work in this space here. So then, therefore, we've got d2y, the dx squared, OK, is going to equal... Well, when we multiply this term by x minus 1 to the half, the x minus 1 to the halves are going to cancel, just leaving us with minus 3x. So we're going to have minus 3x. And then when we take this term, multiply it with x minus 1 to the half, we just get minus 6 times x minus 1. OK, minus 6 times x minus 1. And all this is divided by our denominator here. We're going to have 36x squared, 36x squared, 
and then x minus 1 times x minus 1 to the half, adding the powers, is going to give us x minus 1 to the power 1 and a half, or 3 over 2. So, a lot cleaner, I hope. We can still clean this up further because I can see that if I expand this bracket I'm going to get minus 6x plus 6. So if I lead with the 6 because it's a positive value then I've got minus 3x minus another 6x which is going to be minus 9x. And this then is divided by 36x squared x minus 1 to the power 3 over 2. And then I can factorise the top here, pull out say 3 as a common factor and I'm going to have 2 minus 3x and again we'll have it all over that denominator there, 36x squared x minus 1 to the power 3 over 2 and I can cancel out the 3 into the 36 12 times and now I'm close to my answer because when I simplify this now it's 2 minus 3x all divided by 12x squared times x minus 1 to the power 3 over 2. Alright?